So, uh, let me uh, begin sequences again, I mean, rather it is a continuation of what we have done, we would have to learn more properties of sequences because as I told you they are extremely fundamental, but before I continue doing so I just want to uh, make some remarks. I am going to give you some notes which are detailed regarding the first very conceptual things about number, countability, uncountability all those things, these are very very important things. Hmm those things have to be kept in mind every time you do anything. So, you will get a full detail notes on that before your exam. However, certain things like the differentiation, integration, Riemann integration, uh, fundamental theorem of calculus all those things which have already been done in the class uh, in, in the lectures, they would not be given in the notes, extra things would be given in the notes. You have to keep in mind this simple fact that extra things would be given in the notes. because. Uh, notes are there for you to learn that rather you apply what you have learnt in these lectures and try to understand the things in the notes. See if you are not looking at the lectures and if you are just going to look at the notes then this whole exercise is not fruitful then we could just give you the notes and put the notes on the site and say okay you learn from the notes. The fact that you can uh, listen to the lecture because as I speak on there were lot of things I will add on while speaking as things come in my mind, I will never spell them out in the notes because you know I will just be more uh, precise in the notes. When people write notes or books, people are more precise, but when you are you know giving a lecture which is almost extempore in most of the cases, so you just uh, tell what is there in your mind, so you tell many extra things. So going back to sequences, you have learnt about what is a sequence the three na the nature of the sequences one is convergent and the divergent series has two nature one is oscillating and one another one is blowing up or blowing down whatever you want to say. So, we will now talk about something called a subsequence which is a key notion in our study subsequence. So, what is a subsequence? So, let us take a sequence. Now, let me construct a sequence like this, a new sequence. So, new sequence u1 which I am calling as whose first element is x2, u2 whose second element is x4, u3 whose x6 and so on. Just take, take the ones with the even ind indices. So, what I have done? So, I can write this thing actually u, so sometimes u1 actually can be written as instead of u writing u1, the general technique is to write this as x. So, this is a new sequence, so you are generating a new sequence out of the sequence xn and the new sequence that is generated its first term is x2 and the new sequence that is generated from x n, this its second term is x 4 and its third term is x 6 and so on. So, this sequence is denoted as x n k. So, the index of this sequence is not n, but index of this new sequence is, is k, k is the index. So, here k is going from 1 to whatever 1 2 dot 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 dot. So, you, this sequence is called a subsequence, this new sequence is called a subsequence of x n. There can be many subsequences, you need one countably many subsequences. Now, what, what is the nature of the subsequence? For example, I have x 1 n 1 is x 2, if, if I have x n 2 as x 6, I cannot write x n 3 as x 4. The order in which the 
points appear, the elements appear in the sequence, the same order has to be maintained also in the subsequence. If you do not maintain that order, it is not a subsequence. See, again I am asserting that this little fact which I am trying to make clear to you, it will not be clear in the notes if I just write down the normal definition of a subsequence, people will get confused. And from my own experience in research, I can tell you I have seen research papers where people have made mistake by confusion in the definition of subsequence. So, it is a very crucial definition, it might look very simple that you are just it is not just a subset of the uh, sequence that you have written down, it is, it is something more, it, it is something where you have to maintain the order of elements that you are choose. Right? Once you have x6, you cannot now write x n4 is x1, it, it, this, this will not be allowed, it has to be something bigger than x6. So, that has to be, that is something you have to be very careful about. So, I have given one example. So, so how do I put this in a mathematical language? So, x n k is a subsequence of x n, then the order of the elements of the sequence has to be maintained. So, the element in x n k 1, suppose if I have write x n k 1 and x n k 2 or sorry x k 1 and k 2, where k 1 is strictly less than k 2. If I write that, then the corresponding element suppose this is corresponding to some x alpha in the original sequence uh, and this is corresponding to some x beta in the original sequence, then alpha might must also be strictly less than beta, this has to happen, otherwise you do not get a subsequence. So, this is a key fact, subsequence has a very important link with bounded sequences. So, what is the link between subsequence and bounded sequences? So, let us explore that link, which is expressed through a very important theorem called the Bolzano Weierstrass theorem, whose proof I will ask uh, my TAs to actually put it up on the board, I put it up on the notice board. The, what is that called? The, the yeah, dashboard, because we are not going to prove it here because there is no, no much time to do things. So, link between bounded sequences. and subsequences. One is one of the key facts that we have learned about bounded sequences in the last class was that every bounded sequence need not be convergent. The example was the sequence minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and so on. So, the idea that we should have now is that uh, uh, how is subsequences li linked to the bounded sequences. So, if you choose some subsequence in the bounded sequence, what happens? Does convergence has to has something to do with subsequence? So, here is one of the most important theorems in all of mathematics is the Bolzano Weierstrass theorem. And 
and this thing gets repeatedly applied. It is also available in higher dimensions. So, it is this thing gets repeatedly applied, repeatedly applied. There is a key, a key fact which says that every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. Every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. Remember the two words here every and a. Uh. This is something you have to focus on. When, a, when you look at a mathematical result, your first idea would be to focus on what it says. You have to get the logic very clear before you do anything, right. So, every bounded sequence, every, in mathematics using the term every means is a very powerful thing. Every bounded sequence it does not matter whatever what is the sequence, has a convergent sequence means there exists at least one sequence which is convergent. It does not tell me that every sequence is convergent. It does not mean that every subsequence that I choose is convergent. For example, if I take the sequence like this. Now I take the, I now, now I take a sequence only this subsequence, then it is of course convergent minus 1 nothing else or I take the, so these plus 1 and these are convergent subsequences. So, I have more than one convergent subsequence. So, Now, there can be a subsequence which is not convergent. For example, I can create a subsequence from here. For example, let the first term be minus 1, second term be minus 1, third term is minus 1 and the fourth term is plus 1 again fourth term. You see then that just after third term it again the same repetition starts you take the same elements. So, then again it all starts oscillating. See in a sequence when you look at a sequence its head that is the first finite some finite number of terms if you give away does not make any difference on the actual nature of the sequence it is the tail of the sequence that plays the fundamental role and that is something you should get into your mind. So, this is a subsequence, but not convergent it does not mean it never it see the whole idea is to tell you that this theorem does not tell you that every subsequence that you have is convergent there will be hmm? so there is a small correction here uh, this this sorry this should be alpha less than equal to beta yeah yeah, yeah that is all right I just skip. So, you see uh, means uh, I can uh, repeat the terms here. That, that is what I mean means alpha is equal to beta here because I am repeating the terms minus 1 plus 1 plus 1. But here if I, if I repeat up to some term and again then go back to the and actual form of the sequence then I am not getting it I am getting a subsequence which is not convergent. So, the whole point is that every subsequence is need subsequence need not be convergent, but some subsequence are convergent that is that is the clear clear message of this result. Now, what we are going to now study is the following is that uh, there are certain kinds of sequences which has this very interesting nature of increasing or decreasing that is the function values keep on either remain same or goes down or either remain same or goes up the, the corresponding values. So, what, how do I talk about an increasing or non decreasing sequence if you want to say what non decreasing. So, either increases or remains same. So, 
So, how to talk about this non decreasing sequence? What does it mean? It means that x n plus 1 is either strictly bigger than x n or it is equal to x n. So, similarly, non increasing is the opposite. So, non increasing it means it either decreases or remains same, it does not increase. So, here it is just the opposite x n plus 1 either decreases or remains same, it is true for all n. Example here of course, you know the decreasing sequence, the example is so the, the harmonic sequence which we wrote in the beginning 1 half, 1 third, you see the sequence is decreasing. Sequence is increasing, the very natural number set n is an increasing sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, so what is so important about this? Here, what we will tell you that we will link the increasingness, the na this nature of the sequence to its boundedness. Now, the question is every, every bound, how, how do we reach this thing? So, let us see how mathematicians would argue. So, every bounded sequence need not have a, it need not be convergent. So, what we figure out there is the convergent subsequence. Can there be a bounded sequence which is convergent? Can there be some additional behavior of the sequence, a bounded sequence? which makes it convergent and these additional behaviors or sufficient condition, it does not mean that if a bounded sequence is convergent it has to have this nature, but if a bounded sequence is convergent, right. For example, this is neither increasing, uh, uh, for example, this is not an increasing or decreasing sequence, right, this one which I have given example. So, this is a sufficient condition which tells you that okay, if I add this to this thing of bounded sequence, this the notion of bounded sequence and such a bounded sequence will always be convergent. See when a nice looking thing like a bounded sequence fails to be convergent, we will try to see if there is something we are missing, is there some extra condition which will make it bounded. So, these are the conditions. So, what does it says? It says if x n is bounded above, right, or just, just right bounded, do not bother about above. So, if x n is bounded, which means it has a infimum and a supremum, that, that is what it means. It has upper bound and a lower bound and hence an infimum and supremum. And non-increasing, non-decreasing increasing basically, assume increasing, just think increasing in your mind. I think this term non decreasing is very difficult to keep in your mind, you have the feeling that it is decreasing. So, just keep increasing in your mind, if, if that this term makes you uncomfortable, it, it usually makes me uncomfortable, but uh, so I always think in terms of increasing functions. So, you can just think it is so increasing sequences, so you can think in terms of increasing sequences. So, if x n is bounded and non decreasing, then we, so, if x n is bounded and non decreasing, then x n converges and converges to the supremum. x n converges and converges to the supremum. You might be wondering that why I should now uh, speak about uh, this particular result, maybe I should uh, tell, try to tell you how to prove it, right. So, x n is uh, bounded, 
So, this is one aspect. So, let us see how can we prove such a result. Now, here we will first start with the idea that the sequence is bounded for this result. So, since uh, x n is bounded, it is bounded above, bounded above 2. And Thus, it has uh, since x n is bounded, it is bounded above 2 and thus it has a supremum. And let us call the supremum to be m say, right, supremum m say. Now, you see the idea of the proof just depends on the definition of the supremum and let us see how we do it. We will not go into too much of writing, the idea is this. So, here is your m. So, then take an epsilon 1 and make it m minus epsilon 1. So, if m is the supremum then there is some n naught for which x n naught is here. So, given epsilon epsilon 1, what I have done? So, given this epsilon 1 say, so I have got this x n naught here. Now, what I will do? I will choose an epsilon 2 in such a way that, now what, what, what would happen? Given, so, given that epsilon, sorry, just given that epsilon greater than 0, there will be an x n naught which would be bigger than m minus epsilon since m is a m is a supremum so we will de define now anything x n naught plus 1 x n naught plus 2 everything lies here because everything is bigger than x n naught so everything should be inside this interval so so x n naught is bigger than m minus epsilon so x n naught plus 1 x so any x n for which n is bigger than n naught must be bigger than m minus epsilon. So, this, so what, what is what is happening? So, the distance between for all x n, the distance between x n minus m, right, because m is a supremum, the distance between x n minus m that is always less than epsilon, it is obvious. So, you see how geometry when just by drawing you can do the thing. So, what it means given epsilon greater than 0. There exists n naught element of n just by the definition of the supremum. So, maybe if you want to be more clear by definition of the supremum, given epsilon greater than 0, there exists an n naught such that. So, what happens is that m minus epsilon is strictly less than x n naught equal less than equal to m. So, but this is true. Now, this means that x n is also strictly bigger than m minus epsilon for all n bigger than n naught since x n is non increasing. Right, uh, this is what we can write. 
So, once we can do this uh, fact, once we have written such things, so what does it simply means? It simply means that for, for all n greater than n naught corresponding to this epsilon greater than 0, we have x n minus m, the distance between this, that is basically m minus x n basically is less than epsilon. So, this distance, so m to m minus epsilon, this distance is epsilon, right. So, this is obviously strictly less than epsilon. So, hence what we have done, we have proved that x n which implies that x n converges. So, all the x n's are now lying between m and m minus epsilon. So, it is lying between, so m minus epsilon, m, this closed boundary. So, it is lying between this. So, or uh, we can write from this, it is definitely less than epsilon, it is greater than minus epsilon and since m is a, uh, m plus epsilon, it will take, then epsilon is always less than epsilon. So, what is obvious? Let us just see if you can. So, this simply, we just looking at the picture, you simply conclude this. This implies that x n goes to m. Uh, remaining the with the non increasing part, what the non increasing part will say that x n is the bounded, x n is bounded and non increasing, then x n converges and converges to the infimum. So, you can prove the same thing, it is just a uh, matter of. Uh, now, there is a this is uh, you know this calculus way things were done uh, during the time of. Newton, Leibniz, even in the time of Euler, Laplace and all these people were uh, hardly can be considered to be rigorous by our standards. If you read Richard Dedekind's book on numbers, essays on the theory of numbers, you will pause some of uh, the people who are very well conversed in mathematics would laugh at the proofs given there. Some of Euler's proofs are absolutely not rigorous by our terms, but all his results are correct. So, in mathematics sometimes insight is more important than, than rigor, because just bothering about rigor as Sanjay Mohajan says uh, in his book Street Fighting Mathematics, essentially that rigor can essentially cause you rigor mortis. So, you basically lose the insight. So, so you so, proof what is called a proof today, I do not know whether it would be proof by uh, any standard after 200 years. So, for us it is a proof because we assume a very important thing called axiom of choice which I do not want to get you into that there are issues in the foundations of mathematics and we all our mathematics that you see is based on certain beliefs, certain assumptions that this, this is there and on which I am building the building the castle right. But it work, works fine, it has worked fine, so it has been working fine for a long time. So, maybe we go through it. But uh, many things which was there during the time of Newton, Leibniz, etcetera, the, these things uh, are completely non rigorous by our standards. So, it was Cauchy who first came and tried to inbuilt rigor into calculus, and that, and that he gave the name of analysis. So, uh, and he also built uh, analysis for complex numbers called complex analysis. So, so the, and this what you see is essentially Cauchy's uh, idea and then lot of people like De La Valle, Poso and many other people had actually built up uh, this whole edifice what is now known as real analysis and is one of the most important branches of mathematics. And uh, uh, of course, one of, one of the most possibly the most. Uh, now, all these people who think that okay, I just want to know the techniques of the calculus, you need not bother about this, can obviously close your books and go away. You have learned techniques of the calculus, the basic things, you do not have to really bother. But those who want to see how mathematical thinking has progressed, so this last week is essentially about some mathematical thinking, but here we will also come and do something called Taylor's theorem. In the last three classes, you will see how important it is. It is actually uh, gives you a tremendous power to approximate things. Because as I want to remind you what Bertrand Russell has said, it is very interesting to note that in exact sciences we are always relying on approximations. 
Now, Cauchy figured out that a sequence, what kind of sequence converges? It is a very natural question. What kind of sequence converges? Any arbitrary sequence you can look and say, oh, I do not know whether it will converge or not. I can give a very strange looking sequence for example, which you may not be able to figure out. No, why you? I cannot, many of us cannot just look at it and figure out that why it is, whether it is convergent or not. What kind of sequence actually converges? So, Cauchy defined a category, he found a sufficient condition, he found first a sufficient condition, okay, if this is the nature of the sequence, it will converge. But it was shown later on that any sequence that converges must have that property. So, here is the power of mathematical thinking which tells you a sequence which converges has to have some property and if that property is satisfied the sequence converges. So, this is a complete characterization of a convergent sequence and that is what is called a Cauchy sequence. So, one of my TAs told me that many of you are asking about Cauchy sequences. So, let me tell you. So, the idea behind Cauchy sequence is to really characterize what essentially is the nature of a convergent sequence. So, we will talk about Cauchy sequence first. Obviously, Cauchy did not tell that it is a Cauchy sequence, it is people who later named it as a Cauchy sequence. I do not know the historical, I have never seen Cauchy's book, Kurs de Analysis, I think if I, uh, if I am not very wrong, I could be wrong, uh, yeah. writing in French, Kurs de Analysis, something like this, a course of analysis, something like that. Something like this, I, I do not re exactly recollect the name of the book, forgive me for that, but that, but it is Cauchy's result. Cauchy was a very, very rich man, science again I want to tell you was done by people who had money, it was their hobby and that is why they did so well. Now it has become a profession, so all professional issues come into it and sometimes it mars the joy of doing it. So, here. Sequence x n is called Cauchy if given epsilon greater than 0, no matter how small, there exists n naught element of n such that for all any pair m and n which is bigger which is bigger than n naught, any pair m and n in n of course and m n bigger than uh, sorry bigger than n naught, bigger than or equal to n naught. The distance between x m and x n can be made smaller than epsilon. So, one of the major results of real, real analysis or when you are just looking at one variable functions is the following or just numerical sequences. So, it is following a sequence x n converges if and only if it is Cauchy. So, how do you prove this fact? What are the steps to prove? You see here, if a Cauchy is, is a sequence is Cauchy, then x n plus 1 minus x n, if n is bigger than n naught, is also can be made less than epsilon. That is the neighboring terms, the distance between them becomes smaller and smaller. But that the, but such a sequence, I will just ask you to experiment with it and just try to figure out, this is a very interesting. Uh, example that if you just have x n plus 1 minus x n is less than epsilon, that does not mean that sequence will become Cauchy. So, that is something to be, I, I want to warn you at the beginning. So, now what are the steps by which you will prove? I will ask request my TA to just write down the proof 
it's a very simple proof but i'm not don't, don't no, i'm not going to write too much about it so let 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 me just tell you what are the steps in the proof so we want to prove this the first step is prove that every cauchy sequence is bounded prove that every cauchy sequence is bounded this is the first step i leave you because you are, you are now learning to do lots of proofs here we have done yesterday in the last class also so you can but anyway my ta would write write down the proof prove that every cauchy sequence is bounded this is the first step once you do that the second step is use the bolzano weierstrass theorem bolzano weierstrass theorem to say that there exists a subsequence of that cauchy sequence which converges and once you know then and then you do the proof well, you to use bolzano weierstrass once you figure this out then it's all right use the bolzano weierstrass theorem to assert the existence of a convergence subsequence that's it actually this convergence subsequence itself will be a cauchy sequence because i would like you to first prove this fact every convergence sequence is cauchy sequence is cauchy so this is very simple to prove convergence sequence is cauchy so how will you prove convergence sequence is cauchy just just a two line matter i'll just give you a very brief thing you can write down in detail see so what happens for all suppose l is the limit then given epsilon greater than 0 there exists n not element of n such that for such that mod of xn minus l is strictly less than epsilon for all n bigger than n not this is what's happening so once i know this fact i'll simply write this thing so take m and n both bigger than n not so m and n both greater than n not and for them simply write this this is less than equal to that is you add put plus m and do also add and subtract plus m and l and minus l so add and subtract l so xm minus l plus xn minus l i would not go into the intermediate steps which you should be able to do my ts will do that intermediate step for you and just uh, what does this mean both are bigger than n not it simply means this is less than so i can write this to be epsilon by 2 if you don't mind so given an epsilon i have epsilon by 2 and for which there exist n not such that this is happen so take all m n bigger than n not such that x m minus x n less than this this and each of them is less than epsilon by 2 because m is bigger than n not n is also bigger than n not and hence this is equal to this epsilon so this is sorry, strictly less than epsilon so x n x m minus n is strictly less than epsilon for all m n greater than n not And when epsilon is given to be greater than zero, so it proves that every convergence sequence is Cauchy. And once you have proved that, that's it. So you have to use that again, that fact, and then just use the basic things, basic basic manipulations that will be done. So that is how you prove that every Cauchy sequence converges. So one of the important learning is that uh, this x m minus x n is strictly less than epsilon is very important. x n plus 1 minus x n is strictly less than epsilon is not going to give you a convergence sequence is not going to be a cauchy sequence an example would be written down it's available on the web so we'll mention the particular website and we'll write down the example so you can go and check it up in the web also uh, because possibly that is the biggest library now uh, see the idea is that why it doesn't happen if i put x n plus 1 minus x n 
see what happens, I will just give you the mathematical idea of constructing such examples. The idea is this, suppose I have put x m minus x n. Now, x m could be x m is n plus p, right. So, this can be written as x n plus p minus x n plus p minus 1 and plus 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 x n plus 1 minus x n, okay. All of them are less than epsilon. So, basically less than p epsilon, strictly less than p epsilon. But you know that p could be very large, but x m, any m n n bigger than n naught. I can choose a m very far from n, but bigger than that n naught, given n naught, right, for which a x n plus 1 minus x n is uh, bigger than 0, uh, is uh, less than epsilon. So, what I have to do, what I do, I uh, choose a very big, when a p is very big, then this is not very small. The difference between them is actually not very small. So, then that beats the purpose of being a Cauchy sequence. So, Cauchy sequence means all the terms are actually huddled into a very small neighborhood, a very small 2 epsilon zone. That is what it says that all the terms are huddled into a very small 2 epsilon zone for a small epsilon. So, that is the key idea that when an epsilon is given, I can show that after a particular term, all the term is all huddled in that uh, in a 2 epsilon zone. Uh, that is that is the key idea that every term a, however far one term is from the other by the index number the term is actually given the each of them are within a 2 epsilon zone of each other. So, that is not true if you take these things p could be just too large so the distance of them could be actually very large. So, this is the key idea behind which you construct such examples. So, so, to do check Cauchy sequence, you really have to choose for any m n. So, this is a not, not such easy idea by the way, but it is very important. The conceptual idea is very, very, very difficult that you are thinking of actually clustering everything into a small zone. That is that is the key idea that just I look at terms uh, individual terms side by side that they are very near and I do not bother about terms which two terms which are very far off then that is not true. Even the two terms which are very far off should be also very near, whose indexes are very far off should also be very near. That is the key idea of Cauchy sequence, not just the neighboring terms being very near. So, this is very important to keep in mind. Thank you very much and we will start with series in the next class.